Hey everybody, I thought I'd tell you about my shed that I put together for my generator. Uh, this is to keep it quiet, keep it sheltered. Uh, I took a lot of ideas from various folks on YouTube and other forums on things to throw into the shed uh, to make it quiet and uh, make it useful so that I could uh, use it on my house and also uh, the reason I actually got my generators uh, to charge some electric motorcycles, so it's a pretty big generator So um, I basically got a uh, sun cast plastic shed. You can put garbage cans or lawn mowers in there It's uh, six feet long four feet high four feet deep So plenty of room for my generator and everything else. It is plastic I wanted to go wood, but wood so is so expensive right now that it makes it kind of difficult so it's a pretty nice little shed. I actually got it uh, off of Craigslist. Somebody bought it and never put it together. So it was only $150. So that was pretty good. These are normally like uh, 300, 350, something like that. So I've done a few things to it. As I said, I have a pretty big generator here. It's a uh, Westinghouse uh, WGen 9500DF, which is dual fuel. I'm running it on propane here. Um, I've also put the big off-road off tires on it, uh, which is for a couple reasons. It makes it easier to roll it around. Uh, you don't have to lift it up, um, except for when you're turning it. And uh, when I haul it in my truck, I can actually slide my ramp underneath it. So there's a couple reasons for those wheels. Um, when I'm running it here in the shed, it actually absorbs quite a bit of the vibration, which helps as well. So a few of the things that I've done, um, the first thing I did was I needed to make some allowances for the exhaust. As you can see here, I have a flexible exhaust pipe that goes out and actually goes over there to a homemade muffler that I made that actually works really well. I'll get into that one later. Uh, I was actually able to thread the exhaust pipe with um, one inch, uh, or excuse me, three quarter threads because it was actually one and an eighth, um, and I could actually um, put a tap in there and thread it. So not only can I put an extension on here that I can put the exhaust pipe, um, I could also take the stock spark arrester and I can just screw it on uh, when I'm out, um, you know, riding my dirt bikes and stuff, and I'm legal and I won't set things on fire. So that was one of the challenges. Um, I also didn't want to uh, melt the plastic shed, so I got a flange there. I'm actually going to be wrapping this in some fiberglass um, tape uh, to add some additional, because this does get very hot uh, when you're running it. But so far, very little of that actually transfers to the flange and therefore to the plastic. The other thing I did, obviously, was um, set things up for ventilation. So I have a, an inlet over here. Um, I actually have a blast gate, a six inch blast gate uh, for a uh, dust collector that I can feed the um, cables in and out. Um, I'm running 50 amp to the house, which is right, one of these 1450s. I also have a 30 amp that I could use, but might as well use the whole potential of the um, generator. And those are really big, <laughs> big. You can see how big my hand is, and this is, you know, a good inch thick um, cable. They're really heavy. Um, that was actually the most pricey thing about the whole project was buying the extension cables, as I have to go all the way up to my front door, way up there, about 60 feet away, which I didn't want to go that far, but um, the location of the shed is behind another shed um, and well away from the house for ventilation purposes. So, um, I can close that blast gate when it's not in use. On this side, I actually put in an attic fan, which plugs in here, and it's powered when the generator is on. And uh, that actually puts quite a bit of airflow through the shed. Um, you can sit in there with everything closed and uh, the fan running, and there's quite a breeze through there. So, so far it hasn't gotten too hot in there. Um, the main problem after that was the shed itself was not conducive to sound deadening. It cut down some of the uh, volume, but it also acted as kind of a big sounding board, so the whole shed would sort of reverberate, and it's uh, 
hollow plastic to wall so um, it would actually sort of amplify some of the sound and when it was open like this it would actually shoot the sound back at you and it would actually be louder than the um, generator itself so I took a couple steps to cut down on the sound and it really seems to have worked um, I used a rock wool comfort board which is sort of a semi-solid board uh, insulation product um, it's very good for sound deadening because it's very dense but it is also um, fireproof up to 2000 degrees so uh, you can hold a, a torch up to this and it won't burn and it won't melt like fiberglass so that went a long way towards uh, cutting down the sound but then I still had this big sound board up here I didn't want to put quite that much weight on the lid so I used uh, kill mat automotive um, sound deadeners it's um, vinyl with a foil coating to reflect some of the heat so uh, so far that worked pretty good on dampening the uh, the lid um, it certainly um, about doubled the weight of the lid as well uh, as I said I'm running this on propane I could also run it on gas um, next thing I did was I built some uh, little baffles here um, the idea here is that uh, even though the the other um, sound deadening devices were working pretty well when you would stand on either side of the shed uh, it was almost full volume coming out of those holes so as you can see here I just made a, a little three-sided box lined with that rock wool so the sound will come out be absorbed but then the air has to turn 90 degrees down and then another 90 degrees out so as long as it's not reflected the sound does not like to turn corners but the air doesn't mind so that seemed to work really well and it's uh, almost as quiet standing on the side as it is on the top and then my next step after that was to quiet the actual exhaust which was sort of directional um, it was only over on this side but uh, especially coming out right there uh, it was almost full volume like 90 decibels um, for comparison uh, I'll do some decibel testing here in a little bit but the um, you know ambient sound right here is around 54 you know 54 to 60 um, depending on if there's a car going by um, so what I really did was I took a small galvanized garbage can I ran a pipe um, to the middle and made a 90 degree turn and I have a perforated pipe in the middle that exits out the bottom you can see it's actually lifted off the ground and packed in there is more rock wool insulation uh, both batting and some of the uh, the comfort board um, rigid stuff then of course I raised it up off the ground so you have a little airflow underneath and again sound doesn't like to turn corners and I have another bat of rock wool underneath to absorb the exhaust coming down and in my test so far it's worked great um, uh, it's no louder than the shed itself uh, whereas it was almost 20 decibels higher before and also the lid and the sides didn't even get hot this uh, part you couldn't touch but um, this whole thing uh, was absorbing the heat and it should be no issues with catching fire so those are the main things I did to soundproof it, make it usable in my neighborhood. I don't want to bother my neighbors if I ever have to run this in a power outage. So let's, let's fire this thing up and we'll show you what it can do and what the difference is. Uh, I'll use the decibel meter because um, the cameras don't always do justice to the sound. They, as you uh, get quieter, the volume on the camera can go up so um, we'll, we'll leave it to the decibel meter to show what's happening all right so let's turn it on here this is going to be loud
as you can tell, much quieter. Uh, just me talking is actually louder than the generator at this point. So about 70 decibels, two feet from the front of the shed. And when I talk, it's actually louder than that. Again, once we're on the side, it's actually no louder uh, than the front with those baffles. Same over here. You could actually have a conversation right here with no problems. And even the garbage can muffler, uh, I call it the Franken muffler, is only about 76. And this is about a foot away from the garbage can. Even down at the bottom, it's only a little louder with the air coming out and the air coming out there. So we'll back up a bit. This is about six feet away. Only 67 decibels. I've seen some of these sheds where um, it was 67 decibels like 100 feet away. Uh, this is much better than that. If we back up a little bit. This is actually 25 feet away from the front of the shed. And it's actually 59, 60 decibels with the gate shut. We're down to 56. So as you can see, um, it's very quiet out here. Uh, it actually sounds less annoying than an air conditioner unit running out in the yard and actually out in the cul-de-sac. It was also in the in the 50s, depending on what traffic's going by. So um, that is the shed. And I hope you like that one. I'm gonna post a couple other videos also about um, the earlier sound tests on the shed and maybe building those baffles and the muffler. Uh, and I'm also gonna post a couple other videos about uh, how I built the wheels and how I mount the generator in my truck. Thanks for watching.